So good morning, everybody. This is a special day. We have our ad annual general meeting this afternoon. So um, it's going to be a really busy but fun day and we get to see a lot of each other. So that'll be wonderful. Let's start with our opening song, Winds Be Still, with Jennifer McMillan playing. music. <laughs> As we begin this morning, we pause to recognize and give thanks to the Treaty 6 First Nations upon whose traditional land, Amiskwatchwakanton or Beaver Hills House, we are fortunate to be meeting. We acknowledge that being aware that we're on traditional lands is only a first step, and we encourage everyone to examine what each of us can do to honor the 94 calls to action that are contained within the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada's report. This isn't something that needs to be done only at institutional levels, but involves personal works from each of us to understand our own roles in our culture that perpetuate racism. Welcome to Westwood Unitarian Congregation. My name's Lorian Kennedy, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm your service leader this morning. For some of you, this Zoom format has become familiar and I hope a supportive place for worship and connection. For anyone new, I bid you a particular welcome. You're, we're super happy you found your way here. And I hope you'll stay around at the end to visit in our breakout groups where you're welcome to ask questions. Or if you want, you can stay in the main room where our minister will be. Please check out our website too for information and sign up with your email address to get timely information about all our events. And please come to any event that interests you. The Zoom links are always in the online calendar. So our services are created through the care and efforts of many people. And we offer our thanks and appreciation this week to our musicians, Jennifer McMillan and Rebecca Patterson, and as well to Alara Stefania Godet and Bill Lee, who are providing tech support. Our theme for May is REACH. And today in our last service of May, Reverend Ann will be speaking about reaching out If you have a candle or a chalice handy and you'd like to light alongside with me, this is the time to reach for it. See what I did there. I'll read these words first and then we'll light our candles at the end. 
Our chalice lighting words are by the Reverend Marta I. Valentine. Reverend Marta identifies as a lesbian Latina UU minister and is currently serving as the professional development director at the Unitarian Universalist Association. This reading is entitled Waiting and it's published in the anthology Voices from the Margins. Step into the center, come in from the margins, I will hold you here. Don't look back or around, feel my arms, the water is rising. I will hold you as you tremble, I will warm you. Don't look out or away, life is in here, between you and me. In this tiny space where I end and you begin, hope lives. In this precious tiny space, no words need to be whispered to tell us we are one. You and I, we make the circle if we choose to. Come, step in. I am waiting for you. So we light our candles and chalices this morning in the spirit of making the circle. And I would just say that while we invite all to step in, I'm also lifting up that we also need to step out. We connect and reach out to each other by sharing our lives and our candles of joy, joys and concerns are virtual spots of light when we let each other know of difficult times or moments of joy. And in a moment, I will invite you to reach out to each other by writing these in the chat. But first, Reverend Anne has a candle to share. Thank you. It was 60 years ago this May that the first Canadian Unitarian Council board came to be. The Reverend Philip Hewitt wrote in his book, Unitarians in Canada, the Reverend Charles Edis put a great deal of time into organizing a steering committee made up of eight churches and fellowships that became the chief architect of a national Unitarian organization in Canada. In March, the committee pr produced a draft constitution for an organization to be known as the Canadian Unitarian Council designed to serve the entire country. It would hold an annual meeting at which churches and fellowships would be represented and those delegates elected a nine member board to provide ongoing leadership. Quoting Reverend Philip Hewitt again, a milestone in the history of this organization was passed when CUC formed and held its first meeting in Toronto in November of 1961. Charles Edis was elected the first chairperson and he wrote for the first time in the 130 year history of Unitarianism, Canadian Unitarians from coast to coast met as a representative body on Canadian soil to discuss the state of liberal religion in Canada and to lay plans for the development of a national organization. The Reverend Charles Edis died last week. He was 95, a minister, a colleague, a pioneer and an elder in our movement. And I believe the last original member of the first CUC board. To quote my colleague, the Reverend Diane Rollert, who was his minister in Montreal. He was one of Canadian Unitarianism's greatest leaders, a pioneer and a pillar of our movement. His death is truly an end of an era. So let us hold Charles in a moment of silence together. Thank you. of your concerns and joys now while Jennifer plays for us.
Thank you. And, and because it's the last Sunday of May, we also want to celebrate any birthdays in May. So please add those names to the chat. And um, we will all mute ourselves and sing along with Rebecca in our happy birthday song. Thank you, Rebecca. Let's take a moment to light another candle in our hearts for all those things that remain unspoken but are still with us. And together, if you'd mute yourself and we will read the affirmation. May the light of these candles inspire us to use our power to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to serve the spirit of truth in loving affection and trusting hope. It's been gratifying to see how many people continue to support Westwood with their pledges throughout these months of virtual gatherings. We need this support more than ever. Remember that you are our foundation and make everything possible. We invite you to send us your financial support by e-transfer or by check, as you see here on the slide. And let's join in singing our gratitude with Rebecca. From you I receive, to you I give. Reaching out. It's a many layered topic, one that means different things to each of us, depending on our circumstances, our ideas and our ideals. Our service this morning is designed to be reflective for you to consider a handful of questions, three really, to share your answers in the chat if you wish, or to hold them close and keep them to yourself. We chose REACH as a theme for May because we know that this month is a month where we typically find ourselves reaching. It's a governance month with the National Canadian Unitarian Council annual meeting and Westwood's own annual meeting, which happens this afternoon at two. These meetings call us to reflect on sometimes challenging topics, to make meaningful decisions, to consider leadership roles that we are willing to undertake and recognize when it's time to pass rules on to someone else, to consider the future of our faith tradition and the legacy we will leave for generations that follow. May is also a spring month, a growing month, a time to plant, a time to be in outdoors, a time when we reach for an abundant future. We deepen our connections with nature in this warming season, and so we move more and stretch our winter weary limbs. And we're not always aligned with the season, with our health, our well being, or our circumstances. Spring can be a challenging time to see abundant new life all around us if we're feeling ill, or sad, or weary, or concerned. What we're able to reach for takes on new meaning when we're negotiating complicated circumstances, transitions, or even decline. And May is close to the end of our traditional church year. And this is parallel to the school year. And we know that soon many of our Westwood companions will be off on summer adventures and we may not see them again until the fall. 
Reaching the end of the year is bittersweet, and this is when we prepare, tying up the loose ends of our tasks and our committees and laying the foundation for what will come in the fall. This final Sunday of the REACH series is a partner to the REACH In service that happened earlier in May. And now we're focusing on reaching out. The two are so tightly interwoven though, reaching in and reaching out because they rely on each other deeply. The inner work we do impacts the outer work we're able to manifest. And the reaching out experiences that we create or that we find ourselves needing can also require us to reach within, both from the hard lessons and from the joyful experiences of growth. These words are by Orlanda Brunola, as we move. As we move through life, finding ourselves always newly wise and newly foolish, we ask that our mistakes be small and not hurtful. We ask that as we gain experience, we do not forget our innocence, for they are both part of the whole. In that first service, Reaching In, I spoke to you about the eighth principle that delegates passed at the Canadian Unitarian Council. And this morning, in case you don't already know, I need to share with you the second chapter of that announcement. At the CUC annual meeting, delegates voted to suspend the rules of the meeting and bring a new motion to the floor, a vote on the eighth principle. And that principle reads, we, the member congregations of the Canadian Unitarian Council covenant to affirm and promote individual and communal action that accountably dismantles racism and other oppressions in ourselves and our institutions. A clear majority of the delegates voted yes to the motion and it was declared that Canadian Unitarians and Universalists had an eighth principle. But after the meeting, there was a reversal. Once the national meeting had concluded, it was determined that there had been a bylaw infraction, that a substantive motion could not come from the floor of the meeting without notice, and that bylaws override the Roberts rules process that it was employed to bring the motion forward in the first place. And the CUC board ruled that the eighth principle vote was invalid. So for the next few months, we are nationally back to seven principles. There will be a special meeting of the Canadian Unitarian Council on November 27th, where the sole motion will be the eighth principle vote. The CUC wishes to respect the initiative and the vote of the annual meeting delegates. So they are providing this venue to, re to revisit the opportunity, but within our bylaws and our meeting rules. In the meantime, congregations will receive detailed information packages and undertake the important education process that helps prepare us all for this groundbreaking and culture defining vote. This in no way prevents us from upholding the eighth principle in practice and as an opportunity for growth for reaching in to understand our own places in the conversation and for reaching out to our marginalized members and friends, holding them in intentional grace and care during this pause in the proceedings. And that is not the primary focus of this service. You are the focus of this service with your own understanding and experience of what it means to reach as we all continue through this challenging pandemic time, through the hardships and interruptions that we have faced, the commitments within us that have strengthened and deepened, the complex feelings that arise when we think about our place in a rapidly changing world. I'm going to name a few of the many ways we might approach the subject of reaching out. I'm inviting you to reach within to listen for your own answers. After each question, I will invite you to hold the idea gently. And this isn't a test. It's just to see what comes up for you. If you would like to share your responses in the chat, that would be wonderful. So we can grow a broader understanding of one another and the ways each of us experience the world. When people share answers in the chat, I will read some of them aloud. 
not your names, just the ideas that you share so that they add to the recording for context for people viewing later. And for some of our folks who can't see the chat in whatever device they're on or what context they're working in. I won't necessarily read all of them, just more of a sample. And when we're done, we will breathe together with a musical meditation from our own Rebecca. Reach out. There are so many ways to reach out. It could be that we need help reaching out for support or that we're offering to help someone else reaching out with compassion. It could be that we're reaching out beyond our comfort zone, stretching beyond our safe, comfortable places, or that we are in need of something new, reaching out to try something different, learn something new, build a new skill or a new understanding. It could be that there are other ways you reach, ways that you would love to share. My best friend loves to introduce people to the trapeze, for instance or that you, the ways that you reach can be tender and private, that you hold close in your heart until it's the right time to share, maybe a dream that is still fragile or a hope that you don't wanna jinx by saying it aloud before it comes true. So I invite you to sit for a moment with the phrase, reach out and see what bubbles to the surface. We're just gonna sit in quiet for a minute, hold our thoughts, and then I'll share three questions for you to answer. So we're going to sit with the idea of reach out. I hope that the sound of our dog snoring in the background did not interrupt your reflection. Reach out. Here's the first question. Remember or imagine a time that you needed help when you reached out and were met with support. What are you most grateful for? What are you most grateful for? The first answer in the chat is that I was not alone. My family and friends who helped me through it, friends and family who offered support without being asked, I was grateful for being seen even when I couldn't see myself. For knowing in a variety of ways that folks had my back. For someone who phone texted in response to a candle of concern. My Westwood friends who listened with compassion. Food and groceries delivered by friends when I couldn't get them myself. that the response was, that's awful. Of course, what do you want me or us to do? Empathy, recognition of my distress and helpful suggestions and practical help from professionals who helped me through it. I was grateful for the help I received. People I feel safe crying with. Thank you, everybody. 
Here's our second question. Oh, I want to read that last text. Heart, 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 heart. I don't know how you did that. You must be on a magical device. Remember or imagine now a time when you stretched beyond your comfort zone, when you reached out of the familiar and tried or learned something new, something that may have been a bit frightening or that was difficult for you to do. And the question is, what compelled you to make that reach out? What gave you the nudge or the courage or the determination to take a chance? So we're talking about a time when you reached out of your comfort zone. What gave you the oomph to reach out? I believed that it was worth the risks. Something was missing in my life and I realized it was volunteer work. I trusted the compassion and non-judgmental support. Knowing if I didn't, I was going to stay stuck. I knew if I didn't do this thing, I would regret it when I was 80. I realized I'd stop growing and I'd become root bound. Necessity and the desire to keep growing through the hardest times. I trusted the skills of my companions. My kids needed me to go back to work, so I did it. I wanted something different for my life try a new city and see what is possible. In the 90s, I wanted to start a new path and learning how to use a computer was key to it, even though it frustrated me so much in the beginning. A desire to reciprocate care and compassion. I trusted myself that I wasn't being selfish. I realized I had to do it. Every moment is a new moment so I could reach out, try again, a do-over or something new. It was never going to get easier to do it. It felt like the right moment. I realized that the worst that could happen was just being a bit embarrassed. I want to add that people's lives and safety were at stake. Thank you. Here's our third and final question. Remember or imagine one last time, an effort that you made when you extended a hand or a welcome or an olive branch, when you were attempting to build a bridge where there had been a divide. Whether the connection worked or not, whether your offer was received or appreciated or not, just visualize a time when you made the effort. And our question is, what did you learn about yourself that will help you in the future? So when you made the effort to build a bridge, what did you learn about yourself to help that will help you in the future? that integrity matters. It's important to do the right thing regardless of whether the response is favorable. That it was better to take the risk and just do it. 
I learned that loving someone and understanding someone were not the same thing. I can come with grace without conditional expectation of outcome. Deep feelings come with knowing my truth. That it is worth taking a chance. That it isn't all about me and what I'm comfortable with. This is part of a quote, the one I became caught me. It was a failure, but I am fine. I can take a risk. I learned I could put my needs aside and look to what, what helped the other person, even if I sometimes felt I was betraying myself. Making that effort has been one of the most satisfying things in my whole life, even many years later. That a small team can achieve far more than one person alone. I was amazed at what I could do. I learned how to trust my intuition and take the risks that my mind sometimes tries to talk me out of because sometimes others need me to reach out to them. I would add that reaching out makes me feel true to myself, whatever the result. And that I learn about different parts of myself with every new bridge I build. Thank you, everybody. I guess I was going to read all of them. They were just all so beautiful. Bring your broken hallelujah here. Bring your large one that is beyond repair. Bring the small one that's too soft to share. Bring your broken hallelujah here. I know that people have told you that before you can give, you have to get yourself together. They overstated the value of perfection by a lot, or they forgot. You are the gift. We all bring some broken things, songs and dreams and long lost hopes, but here together we reach within. As a community, we begin again. And from the pieces, we will build something new. There is work that only you can do. We wait for you. Bring your hope broken hallelujah here by the Reverend Teresa Inez Soto. Sometimes reaching out is wonderful. Our hand is received with welcome and the circle grows. Sometimes not so much. But reaching is never wasted. There is always a lesson. There is always a gift. May we never stop reaching for what is good and right and true. Blessed be and amen.
Me too, Sally Ann. I love this piece too. I'm so grateful for all the gifts of music that the different people bring to us in this congregation. And in case you didn't notice, there many much of the music from the reach in service repeated in the reach out, but with different people playing some of the pieces and some of the readings traveled too. And it just, I don't know, I love that piece of music so much. Maybe we'll just use it every Sunday. If you wanna bring your candle or your chalice forward. This is the closing of the formal part of the service, but certainly just the start of the conversation. Again, waiting by the Reverend Marta I. Valentine. Come, step into the center, come in from the margins. I will hold you here. Don't look back or around. Feel my arms, the water is rising. I will hold you as you tremble. I will warm you. Don't look out or away. Life is in here between you and me in this tiny space where I end and you begin, hope lives. In this precious tiny space, no words need to be whispered to tell us we are one. You and I, we make the circle if we choose to. Come, step in, I am waiting for you. We extinguish our flames, but we carry the beauty and the call to both reach in and reach out. We have one more song to sing along with. And uh, by Rebecca. Here we go.
That was Jennifer McMillan, one of our lovely musicians. Oh, I love that song. I love being together with you.